Uh, we have another question coming from Dan Noppenberger. And his Instagram handle is at Noppenberger. Burger with an E. Mm. He must be from Germany. Noppenberger. You want to read this one? Yes. Uh, Dan says, after listening to the discussion about not getting the dream job right out of college at the end of episode 21, I had a question. I just graduated in May and I don't have any industry experience and I've been struggling to get interviews in and around New York, uh, in and around New York, internships, junior staff, whatever. I'm more than willing to cut my teeth for a few years to get experience and learn how to become a better designer. And do you think I'm being picky about location? I really haven't searched anywhere other than New York City. I mean, this brings up a good question. Are people too, you know, we had the the last week's question of like getting your dream job, or maybe it wasn't last week. It's a common thread. Mm-hmm. Um, what about getting your dream location? Mm. Some people like could be happy working at a coffee shop as long as they're in it. You know, New York City or San Francisco, or right. whatever it is. Right. Yeah, I mean, you you decided to move to New York. I yeah. I, well, it was funny. I I remember in school I had a professor, um, our portfolio professor, said, "You guys can either get um, there's kind of two directions to go in your career, right? You can move to a city that you really love and just find whatever job you can to get by until you eventually find something. Mm-hmm. Um, or you can apply everywhere around the entire world for any job that is maybe closer to your dream job, right? And so I took the second path. I was like, I don't really care. I, I could go anywhere in the world um, as long as I you know, get a really cool entry level job. Mm -hmm. And so that brought me to Texas. Yeah. And, you know, I was right out of college, fresh out of college. It didn't really matter to me. I was like excited to move to Texas and experience what the, that, uh, Texas lifestyle is like, you know? (laughs) Um, but yeah, I think after a while I realized that there was a lot of value into the, the second path of like moving to a place that you really enjoy. Right. Um, so I, I mean, my, my suggestion for Dan is do what I did, like get that experience in, you know, work hard for three years, you know, really build up your portfolio, really build up a lot of understanding of design. And then you have a lot more freedom to go off on your own, to venture out into these dream cities that you might have. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What do you think? Well, I mean, I, I kind of think about, has New York city been a dream city for you? New I mean, York's, you were raised in Pennsylvania, so you've yeah. kind of been close your whole There's life. There's not a lot of work in Philadelphia. Yeah. That's, that, was, that was one issue. Well, Philly's an up-and-coming city, but... Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, New York... I don't know. I, I visited uh, New York, I think, my junior year of college. Um, again, Reed Schlegel. Uh, he, uh, he had a bunch of friends up to his house in New Jersey, and we came into the city. Mm, For the longest okay. time, I was like, I don't want to live in New York City. Really? Uh, and then I, I remember um, visiting, and we went to the High Line, and it was just as the High Line was opening. And I just saw the city in a completely new way, mm. like completely different eyes. That's kind of interesting. That's a testament to the High Line. Wow. It gives you... Cause and the, the High Line, just to inform everyone that yes. doesn't know, it's a park that was built on an old subway line, but it's uh, one of those above-ground subway Elevated lines. Elevated rail, yeah. So it's essentially a park that kind of runs through a bunch of skyscrapers. Yes. In, in a way, to someone who doesn't know the High Line. Yeah. It's... Uh, it's really awesome. It's it's. Um, I think what it did for me was just completely change my mind about New York because I always saw it as this very intimidating place. This place that kind of like is like claustrophobic, and you think of Times Square and mm, yeah, and it and it kind of exposed me to those to those hidden oases that are in the city, right? Uh, and uh, you know. That's when I got the bug. That's when I was like, I really want to move to New York. This this is something because I I had decided not to go to a city school and to go to Virginia Tech, which is in the middle of the mountains. 
beautiful area. But um, I think after that experience, I was ready for for New York. Right. Um, and what I was going to bring up was I actually met up with a with um, a guy who reached out to me on Instagram, uh, CJ. Um, I don't I don't remember your full name. I'm sorry, but uh, but I met up with him. He was traveling. He was traveling through New York, and he wanted some advice on internships and jobs and things like that. And I was telling him the story of my friend Oscar, um, Oscar Salguero, who, when I came to intern at Quirky, he also came to intern. We were in the same class together. Reed got us in. And um, Oscar couch surfed for like ah, two months. He just randomly he, slept on people's couches. He was so dedicated to staying in New York. Yeah. And like, and and even even after the internship was over, I don't remember that he had a steady place. And he but he was so determined that he was gonna be in New York and he found his way. Like he he eventually like you know, granted he had the internship coming into it. Yeah. But I mean he he knew he knew he wanted to be in New York. He knew that like absolutely he was gonna be in New York and he figured out how to make that work. I, yeah, I think I, that is a really good story. I think the advice for you, Dan, is if you know that New York's the place you'd be or you need to be, and there is no other option for you, like you are dead set on New York, mm-hmm. then yeah, like figure it out, like couch surf, go work at a coffee shop, like do whatever you have to do, right, to make it happen, right. Um, but I don't know if you are more open minded, then maybe maybe taking the the more career oriented choice is the better option yeah build up build up the portfolio build up some connections Mm -hmm. and then see yeah see about any opportunity because you know i like i hate to to point point this out but there there's something that is keeping you from from getting these internships now i don't know have you have you checked out dan's stuff i have not okay i haven't either so I don't know if it's just because of your location currently um, or if it's, you know, something that needs to be improved with the work and the, or the way that you're representing your work. But, you know, something something's got to change. So you have to figure that out for yeah. yourself. Yeah, I will say, like, Dan, if you're sitting here, like, applying all these places and you're getting no's, you're not even getting callbacks, then, yeah, like, it's time to, like, sit down and, like, either figure out how to do some sort of side project, like start pitching your portfolio to other designers, mm-hmm. seeing, getting feedback, refreshing it. I mean, you know, you got to figure it out. But yeah. I think that, yeah, I mean, that's a really interesting, it's a good, it's a good conversation to have because everyone has a little bit of a different viewpoint on it. Right. And apply to those fall internships. Yeah. That you're, we're coming up with fall internships, Dan. You'll get something. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thanks for sending in, Dan. 